Scripture says that the body is a unit. And I don't think any of us would disagree that to make up who we are, what we consider to be our bodies, it's made up of many parts, but we all serve one function. You ever like tripped out on that before where you're sitting here and as I think that I want my hands to close, they just do it. They just, they, they work in tandem with my mind and and they, they work in tandem with what I'm seeing and the senses that I have. The scripture talks about this as a great word picture for the community that we live in. And it says, the body is a unit. 1 Corinthians 12 verse 12 begins with the phrase, the body is a unit. Though it is made up of many parts and though all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one spirit into one body. So it's saying just like our body is made up of many parts, there is a church, there is an ecclesia, there is a group of people that all point towards who Christ is, whether Jews or Greeks, labor free, and we were all given one spirit to drink. Now the body is not made up of one part, but of many. If the foot should say, I'm not a hand, so I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the ear thinks of itself, well, I, I, since I'm not an eye, I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason cease to be part of the body. And if the whole body were an eye, how could we hear anything? If the whole body were an ear, how would we smell? How would we be able to smell? Not how would we, whatever. But in fact, God has arranged the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. If they were all one part, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts, one body. I think something that's so important about this section of scripture is that you and I, for better or for worse, I think when God designs us and builds us, and as, as the psalm says, knits us together in our mother's womb, it's almost like as he sprinkles different giftednesses on us or different um, predispositions or ways of people thinking about us, character traits, don't you just feel like almost everyone you meet, God, when he was doing like that salt shaker of giftingness on them or that, or that salt shaker of personality, he just kind of opened up the top and let that one pour out? Like maybe you've got a friend and um, I, I'd like to think that most of us as Christians, we want to try to practice the fruit of the spirit, right? I want to be, uh, I want to experience and to exude love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. I want to be that. Now, when you talk to me, if you interact with me and you know me really well, what you're going to understand is there are, as I shouldn't have like a bunch of character deficiencies in there, I, I can't sit here and go, well, I'm just not one of those self-controlled people, uh, or I'm just not someone who's uh, joy-filled. It's, we don't want to use that as an excuse. And yet there's some people, it just seems like they've had, they have it in abundance, right? Do you know someone in your life that when you talk to them, they just seem to exude joy all the time? Or that one of their character traits is they are a peaceful person. When they're around, they just bring peace. Or maybe there's someone who's just faithful to their core. They, 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 they're, they don't know betrayal. They're, they're absolutely all about loyalty and faithfulness to whatever they believe in. It's, it's so powerful. What I like to think is that Jesus Christ is the only human who's ever existed that's the perfect embodiment of all the fruit of the Spirit. He is the only one who he himself is love. He is joy. He is peace. He is patience. He is kindness. He is goodness, faithfulness, gentleness. He is self-control. Which means I think that the reason the body of Christ is so powerful when it comes together and when we meet together and when we're in community is because it's only in those circumstances that we get to see the full body of who Christ is in one place. Because me by myself, like I might, I might be, I'm, I might be loving and patient and joy-filled and kind and self-controlled. But probably when you meet me or maybe you've heard me teach a bunch, you don't go, oh, that guy is crazy gentle, right? Or like he is absolutely 100% patient in what he does. Now, there's some people that would categorize that better, and I think I can do some things in a certain body or with a certain group of people where I've got giftedness that, brought to the, that are brought to the table, but whenever I'm in isolation, I'm gonna lack those other things that other people have in spades. And so like the beauty of community for the church is when we are together is the only time the perfect picture of Jesus's personality and character and love and joy and peace and patience and all those things comes together, which is why the import of our body to come together and to be together and to have life groups and to have community is so dang important because it's only in those moments that we get to see a better picture of the face of Jesus living amongst us with our friends and with our community. So let us not get tired of meeting together as some are in the habit of doing, but continue to meet together so we can see a better picture of who Jesus is. We'll see you tomorrow.